Welcome to a very special MinMax event, is what I would call it. I'm Leo Vader. We have Blake Hester here. Hello. First time, long time. I'll take my answer off the air. Great. Your answer is hello. Uh, we're ranking every single Tony Hawk game today. We're talking mobile entries. Okay. We're talking uh, Tony Hawk's American Skateland. All right. We're talking Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam. We're talking the differences between Tony Hawk's Project 8 and Tony Hawk's Project 8 not on next gen and how completely Ooh. different they were. Right. We're getting into all that today. But first, I want to talk about why we're all here. The man that brought us all together, Mr. Tony Hawk. We're Our celebrating father. Blake's father, Tony Hester. <laughs> we are celebrating Tony Hawk all week. This is the first thing, kicking it off, ranking the Tony Hawk games. But tomorrow, for this week's great goatee hunt, which as always, $10 supporters on Patreon vote between our options there. The options today, today are simply skate or die. So visit patreon.com slash minmax to uh, choose which happens to us tomorrow, Tuesday. Ooh. What's what? great is if you choose die, Tony Hawk comes to the house of every MinMax host. And again, we don't want to spoil it, but it may be the biggest mistake you ever make. <laughs> Wednesday, we're streaming Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Remake, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 on Twitch. So a bit more gameplay there, and we're really breaking down the differences, really getting cerebral about it. Thursday on the MinMax show, we'll be reviewing the pretending I'm a Superman documentary on t the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. If you've seen anything about that, that'll just be a portion of the MinMax show talking about that documentary. And then Friday, MinTracks, our dueling album review show, will be all about the best music in the Tony Hawk franchise, which there is a lot. My God, we could do a ranking base only on soundtrack quality. That would be fun. I, I'm not to pre-plug and hijack here, but I'm also going to be on that men tracks. And I was talking to, uh, to shout her out again, my wonderful girlfriend about the Tony Hawk soundtracks. And I was straight up getting emotional. So just talking about them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Which, which made you most emotional? Tony Hawk's underground, dude. It had like such a profound impact on my life going forward. Mm. Like the music and that game influenced my entire taste and dare I say culture. For the foreseeable future. I think that is very clear to me yeah, that that exactly. happened. And speaking of which, for those watching on the video version, we'll do our best to describe because this will go up in the exclusive audio feed as well. Uh, all we have on the list right now is Tony Ox American Wasteland and Tony Ox Underground tied at number two. That's me and Blake's favorite Tony Hawk games, respectively. Me, American Wasteland, him, Thug. And... Mm -hmm. We know there's no way we're going to agree on which one's actually better. So at the end of the stream, we've decided everything else. We have trivia for each other about each other's favorite game. And whoever knows theirs better, that will be the number one game on the list. Yeah, that's how they're doing the 2020 election this year as well. <laughs> Biden <laughs> and Trump are going to have to answer Tony Hawk trivia. That would be more democratic, I think. <laughs> Let's just jump right into it. Let's fill out this list. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, is that bottom of the list? I've never played that one, but probably. I believe I played even it for though, 10 minutes. Even though I want to say Robomoto, the developer of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, did not get a fair shake. Activision definitely screwed them over on that whole ordeal. But that doesn't change the quality of the game. I think it's just worth acknowledging. Yeah. That they did try. You and know that what I'm was saying? kind of the last game that they contractually had to make for Activision, right? The last Tony Hawk game Activision was entitled to. Yeah. And I, I think the, the story that came out is it was like they didn't have a lot of time to develop it because they had to meet. They had to be out before they lost the license to Tony Hawk's name. Right. So it was like a rushed product. If I'm getting the facts on that incorrect, please let me know. But I believe that's the story that came out. Okay. So we'll put it near the bottom. These are all going to be malleable, but that's Tony's Motion okay. 5 towards the bottom. What else sticks out to you here, Blake? Definitely Tony Hawk's Motion. I hadn't heard of that. What on until earth like is movie. that? Yeah. Nothing about that has to be good. It looks like it's for the Nintendo DS, and it looks like if my mom had to make a video game cover, that's what <laughs> she would come up with. Like, no disrespect to Normanda Caldwell, but that's not great, and I don't see her doing you much. I know you couldn't make that in Kid Picks, but it's got Kid Picks energy to it. Yeah, big Kid Picks energy. And I will probably just to get it off the, you know, just to say it here, the games we haven't played on this list, probably the worst ones or else we would exactly. have played them. I'm looking at this list now and realizing how much of the Tony Hawk uh, gameography I have never touched slash heard of. <laughs> 
Well, it's a lot of these Game Boy Advance games. These will be filling out the yeah. bottom. But which of these portable ones did you play? American Skateland, legitimately good. Really great DS the, game. The only one I remember playing is maybe the original. But Don't it was like weird, GBA? right? It was like, yeah, it was like isometric, right? Yes, it was. Now, why was Pro Skater 3 on Game Boy Color and Pro Skater 2 was on Game Boy Advance? <laughs> what happened there? Oh, I wonder if that's them putting out... them put. No, we have Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 for Game Boy Color. Oh, good. We do have them all here. Wow. So I'm just going to start throwing these mobile ones towards the bottom. Are there any Tony Hawk cell phone games? Mm, let us know in our live chat at twitch.tv slash minmax show. Right? There must have been. There Guaranteed. was, actually, because Tony Hawk made a big deal that it was going to be like a return to form and it was a mobile game. I think we missed one. Okay, yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear about it. Let me look it up. Oops. Okay, we have Tony Hawk Skate Jam, released in 2018 on Apple and Google. <laughs> Apple and Google. Oh, yeah, that game. Oh, that game sucked. I don't want to acknowledge that game's existence. That's fine. Well, okay, so we'll just say for the sake of the list, though, that's 30. That's at 32. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, can all, we can all know that together. Here's the thing. Here's what's interesting. We got Thug 2 and Thug 2 Remix on this list. Very different games. Thug 2 Remix, I believe, first came out on PlayStation Portable. Later got released on other things. But it had a whole bunch of extra levels. Like, you could now choose between your next location between more options new levels new objectives new secret characters it's definitely well, better than thug 2 in my mind okay i want to talk about this okay. tony hawk's underground 2 for a long time i held very high in my mind went back and replayed it a couple of years ago the game is actively bad expand on that this well i mean look now i'm not gonna sit here and say tony hawk's underground or Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. The peak of storytelling, you know? <laughs> Certainly. That's not the, what we love about them the most. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 aged horribly. Like it's milk. unbearable to play. Um, the levels are cool. That's fine. The soundtrack's good. But, like, getting getting through the campaign to unlock those levels is unbearably bad. So you don't like the funny wheelchair kit? No, that aged really badly. <laughs> you don't like Phil Margera in the diaper. I do like that. I do. I, I do. Know you like that. I know that's your thing. Yeah, that was my thing. But, it is uh, such an interesting little time capsule, though, of when Jackass was such a big thing that by having Bam Margera in the game, they're like, why don't we make it Jackass? Well, I'll stand by. I love Jackass. Well, me too. And I love Viva La Bam, I just don't think it translated to Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Like, it was a bastardized version of something that already was, it like, iffy to put in video games as is, you know? Yeah. And of course, Jackass the Game came out, like, I think the same year, so it's like they oh, already Why isn't that on the list? Honestly, it maybe should be. Honestly. I'm sure it was Activision at the very least. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get more of these games on the list and we'll start uh, arranging them more. None of these numbers so far have been final. Pro Skater 4, very high up for me. I, I can get down with that. I think we can start putting these mainline entries towards the top and figure out the order of them later. I don't want to be too incendiary, but um, have you played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, the original, within the past couple of years? No. Extremely unfun. Sure, I believe it. I yeah, last time I played it was on a N sixty four, and it's just uh, the world wasn't ready, not, nor yeah, was well, the technology. Well, I guess I'm wondering how we're judging something like that because obviously, <laughs> in terms of pop culture and historical significance, mm -mm. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater one would mm -mm. be we're not okay. No on historical significance. Fun, on sheer fun factor, we got to put like Pro Skater at the bottom. It is not fun to play at all these days i want to do this list sheer what order would you recommend them to someone I, I you go down the list and they say they've played all these so far okay here's number 14 you play this one now i mean I, I i don't even i i would recommend pro skater like halfway through the list that's where i'll put it okay At 16 of 31 now, i know that Hawks, might 
be Sorry. heresy, but it is what it is. It is what it is. And this is our list. And this is Leo and Blake's official list. And and this is the true list. To us, it'll always be the true list. They're going to update the Activision website afterwards with our tier. <laughs> That'd be, and we should actually see if we can get them to do that. Tony Hawk, Kodak is did you, typing in the CMS. <laughs> did you play Tony Hawk Ride? Is that the one that came with the controller? Yeah, or the, the first like, one board? that did. The only experience I have with that game is breaking the one that sat on the floor in the Game Informer office. Yeah. I mean, everybody felt like they broke that one. It's just kind of when you stand on it, it makes cracking noises that are scary. Well, I think that actually puts it high up on the list because that was fun. That was a fun, funny moment and day for me. Okay. Okay. So I think that would go above Project 8, actually. Well... You've only played the bad version of Project 8, right? Yeah, okay. I, I need to dissect that. Which Project 8 is on the list right now? Project 8, let's call it last gen, Xbox, okay. PS2. That's low on the list, or midpoint on the list about. Project 8, next gen version, is pretty high up here for now. We can talk about it, but it's very high up for me. I think that game is critically underrated. Project 8 on PS2 is the game that made me quit playing the Tony Hawk games. I did don't know if I've touched one after that until the remix. I went to a friend's house who, who had Project 8. I was like, oh, exciting. Let's play it. Could not believe what I was seeing. <laughs> the thing was, Project 8 yeah. finished the promise of Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, where it would be one connected world. American right. Wasteland had to do that by having these long corridors that would hide the load. Project 8 was truly every level was smushed together, and you could combo through every level in the game. If you What's good. crazy about that is I didn't even know that until recently. Like you right. told me that. I didn't even know. Because the last gen version just had the levels separately. Right. Did now, it, two. Th did it ahead. have the timer? Or was it still kind uh, of next gen I don't Tony? Remember. I don't remember. I don't think it had a timer. Like you could like free skate around like you would in the Undergrounds or American Wasteland and like do missions. Is that what you mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. That's what I was checking. Two things I do want to call out in that hold steadies in the soundtrack. Very good song, Little Hutter at Friend. Second is the slow motion thing you could go into and Nail control the, the way trick mode. It. That was so sick. Like that was Fire. really, really That fun. was the game where they redid, they were like, we get heard your complaints. These games haven't been next gen enough for next gen. We're redoing all the animations, motion capturing them, yeah. and putting in this like super slow-mo, do these individual movements that will combine kicks and varials and whatever you actually yeah. do. Almost a prelude to the skate games, or was it after skate? I don't remember. I think it was after skate. Well, almost a postlude to the skate games. Yeah. Which is very exciting. But yeah, that game was very technically impressive at the time. Beautiful. I've been wanting to pick up a PS3 copy of it and give it its fair shake. I wish it was easier to like find and replay for sure. I wish it was on PC. What else we got here? Tony Hawk Shred. This was the what? sequel to Tony Hawk Ride. I never played it. I did play Ride. I got it at a pawn shop for $8. Did not play Shred. Okay. I think that's a 16 right there. That feels mm, comfy at 16. Yeah, I like that. Tony Hawk Skater 3, another mainline entry that'll go up pretty high, I'm sure. I think you got to do like Tony Hawk, them in reverse order. Or maybe not. Mean? Okay. So we have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 at 17 or whatever. Would Tony Hawk 2 be right above that? You know what I'm Tony saying? Tony Hawk 2, though, is a big jump, I think. You think so? At least certainly in my uh, nostalgia glasses. Them. What levels are in that? I I mean, you got warehouse, you got the original school, or you got the sequel to school, I guess. Actually, Ooh. you got Rio, you got Chicago. I played the hell out of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two, and I played it on my Macintosh computer, so it ran really great. Oh wow! Yeah, sounds like it would. The frames were creamy, and I played it on keyboard. C was what? flip, B was grind, B was grab. I. Didn't have a good Ow. enough controller, I felt at the time. And you know what? Honestly, it was pretty nice. Really? That sounds I mean, like a imagine, nightmare. You need those specific inputs for your special tricks, your write down real quick or whatever. It's so easy on the arrow keys, man. Oh, wow. I should, I should try that. I would love to go back because I've only played it on controller since then. Yeah. Since four on Mac. That's brilliant. Uh, okay. Uh, question. Not to throw a wrench in these works. Thug Pro, does that go on the list? No, not official. Oh. Love Thug Pro, shouts out. PC, like, yeah. modded version that combines all the levels. So but good. So good. So good. Okay, where are we at? 
So I think Pro Skater 2 is up pretty high, but 3 and 4 are both above it Okay. for me. Okay. And I'm a little torn on 3 versus 4. What's your stance on that? 4, I think... 4 is... No, 3 is where the revert came in. 3 has to be very high for the revert alone. It It defined what those games are now in our memories. Exactly. Like, because it's like leading up to Underground, each game added a new integral mechanic to how the combos would work. And the revert changed the game because you could easily add um, ramp combos in. So you could go in a quarter or half pipe, do like, you could add a McTwist into a street combo, which right. changes the whole game. And I so, think it says a lot that the new Tony Ox Pro Skater warehouse demo for one and two, that in that game, Tony Ox Pro Skater one and two re-release, they added the revert manual from three because it's such yeah. a important part of how you play those games now. There's no going back so, from that. Something not in the Pro Skater one and two, I do want to shout out, uh, getting off the board, which actually I feel regresses the mechanics a little bit because it takes away a combo option from you. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you no longer get the timer. Okay. Well, for now, I'm going to put Tony Express Skater 3 at 3 and Tony Express Skater 4 at 4. Okay. And like this is that. all like malleable, but I know those two are going to be high up for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro Skater 3 four, on Game oh. Boy Color, probably not that high. Uh, I'm sorry. Wombology in the chat says 4 was spine transfers. That's a big thing, too. Yeah. I mean, I have literally nothing but love for 4. Three okay. is a perfect Tony Hawk game. Four is really, really good. That might so, be my take on it. All these handheld ones, like I have no, I can't say I have no affinity for them. I have no opinion on them. You know? I, know. I don't even think I touched them. It's just Blake. We won't put this in the episode, but it's just a better headline. If you could say every Tony Hawk game. Right. Yeah, you know? that's true. That's true. But I think some of the mobile games were worth noting. Like, Sure. I remember Pro Skater 2 on Game Boy Advance. Obviously, I haven't played all these, but that one, the 2.5D on a handheld, mm -hmm. that was actually impressive and actually well done. More I'm than honestly, people might assume. Very surprised I never played them. Yeah. But I, like, outside of maybe the first one, I don't think I've touched any of those mobile games. Yeah, they're all going to be hovering around the bottom. Okay. okay. For sure. Uh,. Now, Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam, are you familiar? Not not even a little bit. It was a Wii game, apparently also a DS game, but that's news to me. Okay. Uh, motion controls, hold the Wii mount sideways. You'd be tilting to turn, but then you'd do your, your tricks with, your, with the arrow pad, if I remember correctly. Right. Solid game. I never heard one word about it. But it was fun. It was had like elements of racing more than other Tony Hawk games because everybody was going doing this downhill level. Like some right. levels in the games had been that one iconic one that I should remember the name of that was like in one and is in every Tony Hawk game since where you're going downhill towards the end, towards that oh, big jump by the water. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like that made into a whole game, but you're doing okay. trying to do challenges while going downhill and racing. Okay. No love for it. Put it where you want it. Okay, thank you. Definitely above console or last gen project date. Tony Hawk's Skater 2X. Do you ever play that? Is that for PSP? Or no? No, I think that, that was like Xbox. No, 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 no. I never did. Me neither. It was a re-release of one and two. Pretty I much. I feel like that's the one people cite though as being the better version. So maybe that should go above two. Z Stick in the chat just says. THPS 2X is legitimately my favorite game in the series. Maybe we should have given that one more credit. I think it would probably go above like Shred. I think that's safe to say. 2X yeah. Shred at the very least. Uh, what is Shred? That's the sequel to Ride that also used the board. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Tony X Proven Ground, you ever play that? No, but I know Eric Sparrow came back for it, which was interesting. Wow. American yeah. Hero. Well, more the villain of our time. Well, sure. Yeah, I, you know, I think his character was open to interpretation. That's what I thought was so strong about you it. You looked up to Eric no. Sparrow? <laughs> Eric Sparrow was the most like overt <laughs> crap dude in, the, in gaming, probably. I, so Ben Diskin, the voice actor of Eric Sparrow, I interviewed him several years ago, and that's just his voice. Like, he doesn't really? do a voice. 
Like, that's him. So he picked up the phone. And I was like, holy crap. Wow. Well, maybe he's still just, you know, method acting. Yeah, he he never left that character. Right. And he's never worked since, unfortunately. He keeps, like, auditioning for jobs, and they're like, this is The Last of Us Part Two, not Tony Hawk's Underground, Eric. <laughs> ben. <laughs> yeah, they keep calling him Eric. <laughs> Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD. It's hard to defend that one. You know, I defended five. Oh, do you play that one? I mean, I've seen the product, okay. and it's like a kind of a nightmare, right? I don't know. I have very little experience with that. Well, people, when they announced the when they announced the most recent like remake, people are like, "Well, you all kind of already did this, but we don't want to talk about this." Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think it was Robomoto again that did Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD, which, you know, I. I want to defend them on Pro Skater 5. I don't think that was their fault, but I don't know about HD if there was a similar similar issue there. I don't know. But again, if we didn't get play it, it must have been trash or else we would have played it. Yeah, because like we are men of culture. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, I think what we need to do now is hash out kind of more of the top 10. Fill that out. What's looking like it needs to be up there? Okay. Tony Hawk's Underground 2 at 10 feels fine maybe a little high in my head, but I'm willing to, you know what? I think it should be 12 and Tony Hawk's pro skater at 10. Okay. That feels fair to history to me. I'm going to swap pro skater and downhill jam, put downhill jam one above pro skater. Wow. Again, if we're going, Hey, here's the Tony Hawk games you should play in this order. That's right. And I would recommend downhill jam above the first Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk's underground Two remix. You're willing to stand by that one for nine. I think so. I think it's it's definitely one of the best of that new era, like okay. the sheer amount of content in it. And it's fun. You're right. The story is hilarious looking back. A big miss, but... Big miss. But now, fun to play, tons of content. Just to be clear, Project 8 at 8, that's PS3, Xbox 360, right? Right. Okay, got it. And Project gotcha. 8, the other version is probably going to end up lower. Okay, I'm into that, into that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People in the chat not happy about Downhill Jam. Oh, yeah. Sorry, folks. Yes. Okay. One more. <clears throat> one more question here. Are we, even if it's speculation, considering where the remake might fall on a future list? Hmm. That'd be fun to speculate about. Obviously, we won't rank it, but. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. I think it's got a good shot. So what else from the bottom should come up? Uh, Project 8, because it's going to end up being all the mainline entries in the top 10, pretty much. <laughs> For sure. What mainline ones are we missing here? I don't think that much. Underground Besides, 2. Yeah, Underground 2 has been banished for sure. Proving Ground. Proving Ground's pretty low. I didn't play that much of that, probably a couple hours at a friend's house. I think I was doing some interesting stuff. They did more like map creation with that Tony Hawk Project 8 pretty looking engine. You know, the map creation in the Tony Hawk games has always been very strong, so I feel like if that's a refined version of it, we might have to give it some kudos for that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We might have to. We might be forced to. Hmm. Now I'm wondering if Tony Hawk's Underground 2 should go in the top 10. I mean, compared to some of these other ones. I know. I'm just I'm I'm just thinking about the levels in that game, which were all consistently strong. I mean, the New Orleans level. Uh, what was it? Skatetopia? Is that yep. it? No. Skatetopia, yeah. Skate-topia, yeah was that the one with there? Bigfoot? Yeah. Very strong levels. Just yeah. a weak story. And I mean, is that a fair thing to judge it on, is having a weak story? I think it's a factor, but they all have weak stories, you know? Sure. Well, not Underground 1. Besides yeah. Underground 1, which I cry every time. Okay. Now, I I, I am just going to look up Tony Hawk Underground 2 levels really quick, just so I can, like, get the full list. Yeah, get a refresher going. Yeah. Hold on. One second. Um, Pro Skater 2, I think, compared to these other ones, will be pretty high for me. Okay. But... Now, see, I'm looking at the levels here. 
Yeah. For Underground 2. Well, you yeah. have Training, which is Warehouse. Yeah. Then you have that Boston level, which is very good. You can skate on the, uh, the ship, and you can unlock Ben Franklin. In which Underground 2. Very... Yeah, in Underground 2. Okay. Now, you, then you also have Barcelona, Spain, which was a great level. It had that uh, huge bridge connecting the two sides that you could completely grind over if you were a good player. Unlock Stevo in that level. Uh, you could unlock Stevo, who rode a mechanical bull. Now, does that factor into our consideration? Sure. It is a factor. Okay. okay. One of thousands. Okay. Then there's Berlin, Germany, a level I do not remember. Uh, the Sydney, Australia level, weak in my opinion, but then you have New Orleans and Skatopia. And then, of course, classic level, school, Philadelphia, downhill jam, Los Angeles, Canada, and airport. Some true all-timers in there. Some all-time good Tony Hawk levels. But I'd again, be happy Re to Underground see. Remix renders it, you know, irrelevant. That's what's t tough about this list. Underground mm. Remix, just plain better. So do they are they next to each other? Are they sister entries? I think maybe you do Underground 2 at 10, Underground Remix at 9. I mean, that works for me. Okay, I'm into that. Let's do it. But we do have two empty slots in the top 10. I think there's a, we're afraid to move some of these up. Because you're not that hot on Pro Skater 2, even though it's high for me. Sure. I mean, if you want to move Pro Skater 2 up, I'm willing to concede to that. I would put... Project 8 up before I put Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 up. Okay, okay, let's do that. This is the God's Honest Truth. Okay. I think it would be let's so funny to not have the original in our top 10 at all. Well, I don't think it should be. Yeah, and it's that's not great. fun. And that's on God. It's not <laughs> a fun game to play. It was a great uh, Terminator 1 to Pro Skater yeah. 2's Terminator 2. And while we're at it, that song everyone likes, Superman by Goldfinger. No, you don't sucks. have to go there. You don't have to go there. It, okay, okay, okay. It sucks, but okay. Uh, American Skateland. I'm going to move up above Pro Skater. Okay, can you scroll down a little bit here? Yeah. How are you feeling? Um, I, I'm watching on Twitch, so it's a few seconds. Oh, just watch on here. Discord, bud. There's no delay over there. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's see here. Let's see. And don't rush do that, into it. Do we lend credence to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD what it was attempting there? Since we all apparently love it now in 2020 when they tried to yeah. do the same thing that game did, which was remake one and two in one game. That's true. I mean, they were ahead of the curve, so maybe that's three. <laughs> Let's move it all the way up from 22 to <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe that's number one. I don't know. I don't know. There's no way to know. Hmm. Mm. The duplicates are issues here. I disagree. Okay. Okay. My bad. I take it back. I think they're perfect. Pro Skater HD, I would put between Shred and Ride. Interesting thing sticking out to me is 2X being so low, but 2 being so high. Where's 2X? Where we got 2X right now? 13? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, that is definitely just a symptom of me not having played it. But yeah, well, I guess me, if it is just two, huh? Let me look up what exactly Pro Skater 2X included that was different, you know? Because we might hear it and be like, oh, that changes everything. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Five level. It added five new levels. Um, okay. And then... Pro, some elements of Pro Skater 3 were included along with new features. Chat's uh, point of view has been one is more fun than we're giving it credit for and 2x no. is should be way high up. I actually think one is less fun than we're giving it credit for, so maybe we should move <laughs> that down. <laughs> We've been really nice to one. Yeah, I like, and the more I think about it, look, I played one last year for research on an article and hated every hated every minute of it. Rock party in chat saying one is bad, no manual. That's on God. No manual in one? Yeah, no manual. Are you in even one. skateboarding, bro? No, you might as well be rollerblading. Oh <laughs> <laughs> got him. Got him. Okay, fine. Two X, two X should get up there. Let's throw it in the yeah. top ten. Let's move Pro Skater One. You know what? And I would, I would, I would play Project Eight on PS2 before Pro Skater One at this point. 
Wow. That's, I guess that makes sense. Okay. Luckily, we have it higher on the list. No, we, no, no, no. I don't think we do yet, do we? Oh, shoot. I, wow. Yeah. God. I, yeah. The more Chad wants PS1 to, to be up there, the more we're going to move it down. So be careful, guys. Yeah. I mean, sorry, chat. The the difference between us and you all is we're experts here. We know what's right. You all are voting with your heart. We're voting with logic. <laughs> I haven't played two thirds of these games. No <laughs> That's true. Yeah, if you played more of these than us, let us know. Wow. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna scroll down this list. I'm gonna say this list out loud, and you can tell me okay. where the where the issues are. Still tied at two. Haven't decided number one yet. American Wasteland yeah. versus Tony Hawk's Underground. Right. Number three, Tony Hawk's Scare 3. Number four, Tony Hawk's Scare 4. Number five, Tony Hawk's Project 8. Number six, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. Number seven, Thug 2 Remix. Number eight, Thug 2 Proper. Number nine, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Number 10, Downhill Jam. 11, Tony Hawk's American Skate Land on DS. Number 12, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. Number 13, Tony Hawk's Project 8 on console. Or last gen, 14, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1. 15, Tony Hawk Ride. 16 Tony Hawk Pro Skater HD, 17 Tony Hawk Shred, and then all the mobile ones in a random order. <laughs> I do want to say I'm seeing Big Easy 69 saying y'all are just hating on one because you're bad at it. One is more challenging because you can't manual. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I'd point. Like, I would like to counter argue with it feels bad to play. <laughs> Adventure on Atari is actually really good because it's more challenging because you can't do anything in it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, scroll up real quick. Okay. If we're going on raw fun factor. Which we are. Wouldn't four be higher than three because we get the revert? Or the three. transfer? Yeah. You know, I don't know. That's a, it's You start to run into uh, how much is too much. Feature bloat. Because, again, Tony X Pro Skater 3, tight, tight product. Pro Skater 4 had more in it. But, but by that logic, why are we going to argue that something like Underground or American Wasteland would be so high? Because they started adding cars, bikes, getting off the board, open worlds. We'll get to like that conversation. I think we should have that conversation in addition to the trivia. But oh, I, I think so much of what they added was more meaningful, maybe? Like Tony X Skater 4, almost the template for Thug. It was like, let's experiment with more openness. Yeah. But uh, all this to say, I would put 4 above 3. If you wanted me I to, I could go either way on that. They're both amazing I think, games. I think we should, yeah, because I'm asking you right now. When you played the warehouse demo, you were doing transfers, right? Oh, I was doing so many transfers. Exactly, and that's really important. Yeah. Wombology says four had cars and sketching too, but Thug, you could drive the cars. It, yeah. If, and so you might argue that. that was not fun and, and felt it's, bad. It's, it's, sure. <laughs> And you might be correct. And they never put it in any other games for that reason. Yeah. Uh, but let me counter argue with I was the one invited on the stream, not you all. <laughs> so it's fine. Maybe next time. Okay, I'm putting four above three. Because okay, okay. Uh, the secret skater factor, the tiebreaker in my mind, Django Fett in THPS 4, the mm. Django jump jet as a tactical option. Okay. Shooting you. Literally the only special trick in the game where he would shoot... 10 feet higher into the air and you could use it to like get to other areas okay like i'm in uh, i w you know weird tangent doesn't speak to the quality of the game but so much fun django jump jet check it out historical significance should be an exception for one without it you wouldn't have any of the others just saying if we, yeah well no exceptions without, is the thing it's like without birth of a nation we wouldn't have a lot of like films too but i don't want to talk about birth of a nation or you know even tony hawk game should we put birth of a nation on here yeah put birth of a nation on it three a big easy wants us to <laughs> <laughs> all right uh anything else feeling wrong about this i'm not sure about this thug 2 and thug 2 remix i don't know it's weird they're kind of the same game they should almost be on the same tier really like they effectively are seven and eight or they could just be tied for seven it really makes no difference. How does to that me. change the rest of the list, though? We just have to move everything up one. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Thug Two and Thug Two Remix are at the same level, which is one below Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two X and one above Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two. <laughs> okay. That makes okay. sense. 
that's good because it's just I don't there's I don't like having both of them taking up their own spots in the top ten. Yeah, despite all the other repeats. Yeah, right. The top ten is what's going to matter most. Sure, is my is my perspective. It's good that we have downhill jam on there. I'm sure many people agree with that. <laughs> Remember, no nostalgia here. No nostalgia exactly. allowed. Yeah, keep that in mind when I start talking about underground. Yeah. Okay, so where do you think, if you were a betting man, something like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2 remake would factor on this list, or would fall on this list? Hmm. Uh, I'd like to see how much there is in it. I think it could land pretty high. If it's got all those levels, all those challenges, it looks like they're changing some stuff. You're getting XP points now. So there's a possibility yeah. like the changes they make would suck. But I think the way skating feels in it feels pretty good. I could see it being in yeah. the top 10. I would say high, uh, high on the list, but low in the top 10 for me. Sure. I believe it. It would probably sneak in between Downhill Jam and THPS2 original. The thing that bothers me is it doesn't even feel as good as something like underground through American Wasteland Project 8, which is kind of like where they find like the last of the honing in the feeling of those games. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even, th I don't think the new one feels as good as this. Yeah, interesting. I'd love to compare. You might be right. Clever Cadaver asks, what's the logic between Thug 2 and Thug 2 Remix being one slot together, but 2 and 2X are separate? That's a fair question. I think 2X was like 15 years later versus Thug 2 Remix was like maybe not even a year later. Yeah. It was just on uh, PlayStation Portable. Also, we have a formula we're running behind the scenes to make yeah. sure that these all are correct. Trust um, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. Funk Uncle is saying Tony Hawk Proving Ground had the Beastie Boys. Eight, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD had Metallica. Thug had Kiss and it still manages to be good. <laughs> now... Good point. I, I am. I, I, I'm trying to figure out the logic there. Is are you saying Beastie Boys and Metallica aren't good because Kiss is definitely bad? I'm with you there, but do you not like Beastie Boys and Metallica? Okay, Blake, we can't be getting into these arguments now, right? Well, I'm just saying. I think it's it's worth bringing up. It is. Uh, but speaking yeah. of Kiss, are we satisfied? Do you want to get into the conversation about Thaw versus Thug? Yeah, I, I guess I'm curious. Do we each make our case? Let's to just talk each. about them. We know it's going to okay. come down to the trivia because, again, to reiterate, Blake and I would never budge and let the other person put their chosen game at number right. one. So we have to decide it impartially with a trivia contest. But for now, yeah. I just want to give these games their fair shake and talk about why we love them so much. Blake, of course, Thug being your favorite game ever? Of all time. Yes, for sure. To this day. Like, to this day, one of my most played games year over year. Except for recently, my PlayStation 2 crapped out on me last year, so I need to buy a new one. But uh, probably in, like, 2018, I probably, no lie, put 70 hours into that game. Nice. Yeah. Comfort food. So I'm ready to make my case. What do you like about it? Yeah, get into it. I think with Tony Hawk's Underground, you have the ultimate refinement of the mechanics of the Tony Hawk series, right? Which is an important thing to the series. Those games all about the new things you're going to do game over game. And something like they had basically done all the things on the skateboard at that point. You, uh, you have your manuals, your transfers, your reverts, all this stuff. But then they gave you the option to get off the board, which changes the whole game. It opens the levels up in interesting ways. And people argue that stuff didn't feel good. And that's fine. You know, art isn't supposed to make you feel warm and happy inside. Sometimes art makes you uncomfortable. And that's <laughs> but the idea of being able to get off your board, keep the combo going with the timer, and implement new architecture that way, because you can be climbing onto things. Like, you don't have to be constantly tricking while that timer is counting down. Brilliant. You can set yourself up for a whole new variety of tricks by having a little leeway with the timer so you're not like, oh, I need to make sure I'm balancing on this manual or this grind or whatever. Like, you can give yourself a little breathing room, set up a good next run for yourself. Brilliant stuff. The story in and of itself, I think, was an awesome 
if, uh, you know, a bit over the top, look at what the actual rise to skaterdom was like to be a pro skater. It was a really um, cool it, swing for them to make to try and tell like exactly. a story about a skateboarder. And it was like willing to get into the minutia of it in an interesting way. Of course, once Underground 2 hit and American Wasteland hit, they were very over the top. But this game is a lot more intimate. You know, you're making a sponsor me tape. You're getting your first sponsorship. You're excited to just get a new skateboard. And then you're rising all the way up to your first tour. And how do you promote a tour? And then you're a pro and all this stuff. It was like weirdly, I, I don't want to say fact, like factually <laughs> accurate or whatever. But like, you know, it was a fun look at what a skater might go through. And then with levels, you know. The levels are incredible in this. I think Manhattan alone, the single greatest Tony Hawk level that has ever been made. That level is an awesome bastardization of like all the boroughs of New York because <laughs> you have like the Brooklyn Bowl or Brooklyn Banks right next to like the Chrysler building. I don't think the Chrysler building is there. What, but just what like, was great about that level and what makes a good Tony Hawk level to you? The size? The, the size definitely. Because like, when you play some of those older levels, like you're zipping around them so quickly that, you know, you're hitting the same ramp over and over. Yeah. And Tony Hawk Underground, the, the sheer size of them, I kid you not, I'm still finding new things in those levels I did not know about. Like new things to skate or new ways to approach a line, um, Easter eggs, stuff like that. So the actual scale of them was, re re I think, was really strong. But also they did the verticality in great ways. Like you could get from you know, the roof of a building down to the ground floor back to like, you know, you're skating on top of a, a house or something like you were able to just go up and down them in really interesting ways. Yeah. And I think like the scale of them plus the verticality of them open those levels up in ways that other games had. And the last thing I want to touch on get into it is the soundtrack of this game. People always want to say, yeah, pro skater one, pro skater two, whatever. I get it. Mill and Colin, no downhill cigar, jam. All that stuff. Yeah, downhill jam. Who can forget Tony Hawk's, uh, what was the motion, the soundtrack on that thing? Yeah. But I'm telling you, man, the soundtrack to Underground is unbelievable. I mean, it's unrivaled, not just in the Tony Hawk games and licensed soundtracks in general. You have, like, if for a kid growing up in Kentucky to hear bands like Refused, of course, New Noise is on there from The Shape of Punk to Come, one of the most important albums of all time. Of course. To hear something like Nas is The World is Yours from, Ill from Illmatic, one of the most important rap albums of all time. To hear stoner metal for the first time, to hear a band like Clutch. To, and then like that, I wasn't being exposed to that at nine years old. You know, by going to, I don't know, shows or whatever. I wasn't <laughs> a part of an art community or cool underground music community. But I could play this game and be exposed to music that I had, unlike anything I had ever heard before, and such a wide swath of music. That soundtrack is huge. If you go back and, like, look at the song list, it's, like, three, four times the size of something like Pro Skater 1 or 2. Hmm. Like, it's absolutely massive. And I have to say, my favorite band of all time, Alkaline Trio. Their song Armageddon from From Here to Infirmary is on there. That changed my life hearing Alkaline Trio. That whole soundtrack shaped my taste in music forever. And for the better? Huge, for the better, for sure. Oh. I mean, like, Alkaline Trio, one, my favorite band. Illmatic, one of my favorite albums of all time. Refused, huge influence on me. Um, hearing Impetus by Clutch, probably maybe one of the first times I've ever heard a song with no singing, just screaming in it was like massively, <laughs> massively influential on me. And then, you know, all the like weird small bands on there, like Mike Villaley's band, Mike V and the Rats, with uh, I think these these are the days on there, Angry Amputees, Assorted Jelly Beans, I think uh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien is on there, or maybe it's Deltron 3030, Bus Driver. Like growing up in Kentucky and suburbia, like hearing that kind of music for the first time was amazing you know yeah like, i can definitely see that i feel like if we had never talked about tony hawk in our lives it would be i would still in like a match this tony hawk game to this person like thug yeah. is you right yeah now. exactly like i cannot understate what that game means to me as like a person and i've been lucky to write about it in the past 
um, that game was massively influential on like not like me as a gamer or whatever, like me as a person. Um, so it's very important to me in that way for sure. Also, Bam Margera has the greatest line of all time, uh, where he says, "Hey man, that rhyme, that r- that run was bull s, but in a good way." Classic, loved it so far. <laughs> And that's just bam for you, baby. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's a great pitch. And if it were mm-hmm. up to the best pitch, you might take Thug to number one. Mm. But we know mm. it's not. To speak more about my experience with American Wasteland, my favorite game in the series, I think that is, it was obviously the last game before Project Date, before all the motion capture stuff, which was good, but it was kind of like Thug at its most goofy. Mm. You know, you are collecting pieces of buildings like structures for your dream skate park you know you're grinding on the this gas station sign and you nail it just right so it flies to your ranch yeah. it literally flies through the, away into the sky like team rocket it's very so, good so goofy and the they had really nailed the uh on the ground stuff at that time the off the board stuff mm-hmm you could get off your board, throw it at any time, pull it back into your hands like the Matrix, smash any pedestrian over the head with their with the board. You could do wall runs, wall flips as part of your combos, actually Ooh, using right. the parkour system in a little more well implemented of a way. I liked Thug a lot, but you know, those grabs were kind of those ledge grabs were kind of uh hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Say same. Again, first time that all the levels were interconnected, really felt like one big city, really hit home with that you're a skater and this is your story it being that uh connected it being like one you know long journey you go on that of course i played enough times where i was just trying to beat it as fast as possible over and over again on sick difficulty they added Mm -hmm. bmx biking (laughs) which may be a symptom of bloat but i thought it was implemented really well like just picking up a bmx bike and bmxing for a little bit just to mix it up like oh i need to go all the way to the other side of this map i need to cross four levels maybe i'll go there on a bmx bike just just to experience those mechanics a little bit i thought it was so so fun and of course great soundtrack it was a lot of covers that a lot of people would say weren't as good as the originals but it's a lot of really great music that i still listen to this day what's up fat lip amazing track but Mm -hmm. I, I think it uh, it was the peak of those games for me, for sure. Uh, Project 8 did some great stuff, but American Wasteland was like, it was a linear progression from THPS 1 all the way up to American Wasteland. And then Project 8 was kind of a, a jump to the side that worked for some people and didn't for others. I do want to say American Wasteland is fantastic. It is one of the, like, whether it's, my one is underground, but like my two would be American Wasteland. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like it, it also, I don't do people poo poo on that soundtrack because I think it's awesome. I have the CD of it somewhere around right. here. Yeah, yeah, I think it's awesome. I think those covers, for the most part, all land cool. Yeah, I, I adore that game, and it's hard to separate it from nostalgia, but also still going back to it just feels great. Just like some of the best those arcade sure. skating mechanics have ever felt. BMX stuff was really good, yeah, man. Them. It was really fun. And the building your skate park, super, super good. When I went back and replayed it a couple of years ago, I forgot how empty it starts. You ha- just have like a half yeah. pipe and then as you go through. It's like one of the best levels in Tony Hawk is the finished skate park. By the time super- you get there and just the progression of like you keep going back and checking in and it's like, yeah, I remember where I got this. This is just exactly. building up a little bit. There's more and more to do. That system there was, was super fun. There was a really cool thing that would happen in the hallways that connected levels where you would skate through and then some of them would change to like a uh, a CCTV camera and it would be in yeah. slow motion and you could trick. That was I really liked that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I don't like that that game made fun of my home state. The character one the the uh, NPC at one point asks if you're from Kentucky. Didn't enjoy that. Well, you give him a fair share of justice. I think he's clearly depicted as the the villain. Right, yeah. Yeah, you do bang him across the head pretty something pretty good. Oh, you could hit people in that game, too. Could you yeah. hit them in the ground, too? I don't think so. Mm. It, yeah, I think it gave you buttons for off the board that it, you did not have before. Right, and you could do, like, flips and stuff, like double jumps. Yep, yep, double jumps. Front flips, right. back tucks. 
God, that game felt good. Okay, well, I'm ready to figure it out. Let's get into it. Uh, who do you want to take trivia first? You want me to ask you some cues, or let's alternate cues for each other? Yeah, I can go first. But you want to do alternate every question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fun. Okay. And then we'll, I guess, is like the way we're deciding it, who gets the most right? Yes, out of ten okay. questions. Okay. So I'll write to down make... how many you get right. Yeah. Okay. The Tony Hawk's American Wasteland soundtrack featured contemporary bands covering classic punk rock songs. The band Emanuel from the Louisville, Kentucky area, where I'm from, covered which song? Search and Destroy by the Stooges, Astro Zombie by the Misfits, Ever Fallen in Love by Buzzcocks, or Fix Me by Black Flag? Now, don't look at chat in case they're answering it. I won't. And we haven't played the games or read about them since we decided to do this out of fairness. Correct. I'm going to say Ever Fallen in Love. I'm sorry. It is Search and Destroy by the Stooges. Damn. Okay, well, that was a good question, and I liked how you gave me multiple choice, and it was well written. My question for you is, what year did it come out? 2003. Thug One. All right, a little softball for you. The singer of a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducted punk band is featured as an unlockable skater in American Wasteland. Who is the singer? I do not have multiple choice here. Unlockable skater. So this would be for like classic mode and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Wow. Can you repeat the question? The singer of a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inducted punk band is featured as an unlockable skater. Who is the singer? A singer. Now, the important thing in this, and it's why I couldn't really do multiple choice, is to keep in mind that it's a punk band in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. A punk band? Yeah, not a ton of those. I'm going to say... Wild guess here. I'm going to say... Joey Ramone. No, it's Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day. Oh. You know I never would have played as him. Which I didn't even remember that being a thing. Like I I, I made sure to look up video of it to make sure it was true. Because I was like, that does not That's sound That's hilarious. Right I have no memory all. of that. I, one thing I wanted to say about Thaw, though, had a classic mode in it with two-minute runs on all sorts of different levels that weren't in the main game, and you could play it co-op. Co-op classic mode in Thaw. Come on. Was good. Was Amazing. Good. Okay, Blake, if you're so smart, okay. what year is Thug set in what year does the game take place in is it not just 2003 it is not 2003 2004 damn is that a guess yeah yeah i mean they were an they were an annualized series and it was supposed to be like modern day so i assume they would give themselves only like a year wiggle room you know what i'm saying you're right and you went for a year after besides a year f- yeah. before smart exactly. yeah there's a sign at the tampa am competition apparently it says 2004 oh uh, okay got it which one of these pro skaters is not featured as a playable character in american wasteland this is tricky because there was none of this in the campaign this is all like classic mode stuff and free skate did you not do a lot of free skate no, I did it in in the career mode. I just skated around. Wow. Sorry. No, okay, it's so good. It's fair. Which of these pro skaters is not an American Wasteland? Tony Alva, as a playable character. Tony Alva, Daywan Song, Chad Muska, or Mike Vallely? God, it's between two of them for me. It's between the middle okay. two. Okay. And I want to say... Day one song. Chad Muska. This was the first Tony Hawk game Muska wasn't in Second as he was guess featured. Myself. <laughs> he was featured in all the pro skater games and both underground games. Yeah. He had yeah. a big part in two. Yeah. Shit. Had a big part in one too. He gave you the uh your first he gave you that board, remember? I wonder what that falling out was. Yeah, it's louder than a Metallica concert in here. Wow. Okay. In the Jersey level of Thug, who teaches you the flamingo? Flamingo. The flamingo. 
I know Mike Vallely is skating around that level. And you can learn a special trick from him. I'm going to say Mike Vallely. That's correct. Yes! Yes! Wow. Nice, man. I almost, I almost said Rodney Mullen, but I was like, I do not remember him in that level. Okay. Which of these is not a level in American Wasteland? Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, Pasadena, Hollywood. Pasadena. That's correct. Okay. Which portable platform was the game released on? Game Boy Advance. That's correct. Yes! <laughs> I was trying to remember which one I saw it on when we were making that list. <laughs> <laughs> American Wasteland was the first game to sh to try a specific new thing with the game's levels. What was this change? A specific new thing with the game's levels. Yeah, think about how the levels are organized and what's different about them. The interconnected aspect, or is that too obvious? Yes. But specifically, they had no. <laughs> no. I don't know what you're looking for here. I'll give it to you. It was no load screens. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I got you. But, that but was a kinda. big pitch. No load screens, kind of. You did have to load into Casino and Vanscape. Playable. Oh, okay. Yeah. Playable load screens, I would describe it. Sure, 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 sure. The secret level, as we all know, freebie. This isn't a question. You know it. Okay. The Kiss concert. Hotter than hell. Name one of the three songs that that band can play on that level. Uh, rock and roll all night. And spell it? I'm sorry? Spell the second word. Of that Amber song. I'm sorry, it's the letter N. Sorry. Oh, Can't get give it out to you. Of <laughs> no, I, no, you got that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, I, I knew that one was in there, and I was trying to remember the name of it. I don't remember the other two because I hate that band, so I have those three songs turned off, but I do know the other <laughs> Right on. Which Southeastern American city was featured as a bonus level only in the PS2 collector's edition of American <laughs> Wasteland. I want to say, I asked my girlfriend these questions. She's never played a Tony Hawk game. And when I said Southeastern American City, that was enough for her to know. Miami? Miami? That's in the Southeast. I guess. Is that your final guess? That's as good as I'll get. Although, no, you actually, you made that noise when I said it, so I'm going to change my answer, actually. I'm going to say... Yep. Uh, Nashville, Elvis, hometown. Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah that would have been a wild guess. Mm -hmm. What trick do you perform over the helicopter in the Hawaii level? McTwist, refuse new noise plays. It's amazing. <laughs> I really... <laughs> Maybe we should have coordinated on the difficulty more. <laughs> that would have been the answer. Toy Which of PlayStation 2 Collector's Edition? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Take it up with uh, the Tony Hawk's American Wasteland wiki page <laughs> <laughs> on fandom.com. Well, do. Which of these is not a new mechanic introduced in American Wasteland? The ability to ride BMX bikes, the sticker slap, basic parkour, or slowing down time? What do you consider basic parkour? What was in American Wasteland? <laughs> okay. And what was the second one? The sticker slap. God, okay. I know they added the wall plan and then they added the sticker slap, but I think sticker slap was in Thug 2. So I'm going to say that was not the new mechanic. Correct. Yes. Yes, thank you. What happens in Thug's alternate ending 
that you get after beating it more than once. Punch Eric Sparrow in the face. That's correct. I think you've gotten every single one of these right. Thank you. Um, I want to say this question's unfair, but my girlfriend got it right. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> a month ago, a new world record speed run was achieved for American Wasteland. Did it take the player 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 50 minutes, or two hours? 30 minutes. 50 minutes, specifically 50 minutes and 58 seconds, according to speedrun.com. Wow. Your girlfriend's good at guessing, man. <laughs> yeah. I tell her I said that. I think she's watching. All right. Uh, for those keeping count at home, uh, as far as the trivia score, Blake is in the lead. <laughs> uh, true or false? Tony Hawk's Underground features online play. True. That's correct. I was thinking because you could send your face in and they would map it to your player character. I was like, okay, so it has some online component. Hmm. So then Smart. I was like, okay, it must have had online play. Smart. All right, here we go. A CD was released with all of the covers in the game soundtrack. Interestingly, the soundtrack reached number 148 on the Billboard Top 200, number four on Billboard Top Soundtracks, and number 10 on Billboard Top Independent Albums. The cover art is an homage to what landmark punk album? And no multiple choice here. I could give you multiple choice off the top of my head. That'd be great. Because I think I know the band, I just don't know the name of the album. Okay. Never Mind the Bollocks by the Sex Pistols. First two seven inches by Minor Threat, or The Clash is London Calling. The second one. No, I'm sorry. It's The Clash is London Calling. Boy. The soundtrack the cover art. Cool. <laughs> that, did, could you not picture it? Not really. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have let you look at it then. Oh, no, that's, that's fine. Okay, okay. What was a feature, a new feature in Thug that had never been in the series before, besides the walking and the story? Driving a car. I'll take it. Okay. Driving okay. a car. I accidentally mentioned it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last one. If a D Milk says time for the comeback, hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> That's right. This one's Which worth of... 20 points, you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which of these bands? I'm sorry, I'm drinking a LaCroix, so I'm burping quite a bit. Bebo1979, not sure if they're trolling me, but they keep calling me Brent. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, roll past it. This is what they want. <laughs> I keep seeing that. Uh, which of these bands is not featured on the game soundtrack in any capacity? Meaning they're not covering, a, they're not a band that wrote a cover song, if that makes sense. They're, they don't have a song in it themselves. None of their music is featured in the soundtrack at all. It gets weird with the covers. You get what I'm saying? Sure. My Chemical Romance, The Doors, Rise Against, The Clash, or Fall Out Boy? Five choices with no songs on the soundtrack. No songs in any capacity. Not covered, not nothing. Mm -mm. I My guess is The Doors because that's that was Thug 2 that they were prominently featured in. Incorrect. It's The Clash. Really? Yeah. Well, this was very informative. <laughs> I found that question interesting because they put, they homaged The Clash on the album cover. So yeah, saying. that's very weird. That was the last one I yeah. expected. Yeah. Very tricky. Now everyone is calling me Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Final question for you, Brent. Okay. Name one of the pro skaters that Thug was their last appearance in a Tony Hawk game until Pro Skater 1 plus 2, 17 years later. So their last appearance, effectively, for nearly 20 years. 
So a pro skater that wasn't thug, but wasn't in any of the other thugs. Alyssa Steamer. We'll accept Alyssa Steamer. That's fantastic. Can't believe they didn't put her in some of the other ones. And Alyssa's awesome. Yeah, she had a really interesting like a biography video on Thrasher yeah. of just like seeing where she's at now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. So that's 10 out of 10 for Blake. What did I get? Uh, let's see here. Three. <laughs> I got hopeful it was like a lot of numbers to count. Like you're counting really high. That's why I took that one. <laughs> yeah. 300. <laughs> Great. Like I said, though, like your answer for Thug, if we were just making the list without the trivia, it would have won anyway. So congrats. I, you can never underestimate my love for Tony Hawk's Underground. It runs very, very deep. Yeah. Don't don't underestimate it. Well, great. Really, really quick. Yeah. Yes. I'm back. <laughs> so this list, I did make one other adjustment, which was to move uh, Pro Skater 2 on GBA up because I do remember that okay. game. It was really good. Thank you to whoever in the chat shouted that out. But let's go over the list okay. one more time now that it's finalized. Okay. I think it's looking nice. We have yeah. number one. Or we go backwards, don't we? You know, that's, yeah, how, yeah, you, yeah, that's yeah. how you call lists. Yeah. Uh, Tony Pro Skater 5 at number 30. Sorry, we know you tried your best. Tough situation. That's right. the reality. Uh, 29, Tony Hawk's Motion on Nintendo DS. 28 through 20... 28 through 18 are interchangeable mobile versions of other yeah. games. Doesn't matter. Doesn't Just matter. Garbage. Doesn't matter. Number 17, Tony Hawk Shred. Second game on the board. The physical board. Number 16, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD. Number 15, Tony Hawk's Ride. Number 14, Tony Hawk's Spectator 1. Number 13, Tony Hawk's Project 8, Last Gen Edition. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Number 12, Pro Skater 2 on GBA. Number 11, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. Number 10, Tony Hawk's American Skateland on DS. Number 9, Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam for Wii. That's Five right, Wii. gamers. That's right, gamers. Number 8, THPS 2 Classic, original. Number 7, Thug 2 and Thug 2 Remix. Share that spot. Number six, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. Number five, Tony Hawk's Project 8 Next Gen, Real Edition. Number four, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Number three, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Tongue twister. Number two, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. Number one, Tony Hawk's Underground. That's right. As God intended. As God intended. As God intended. That's right. That's this great. Is good. This is good. That's great. I like all these twos we got in a little bunch at the six through eight. Yeah, and uh, as soon as we get off the stream, I will be uh, calling Bobby Kodak to update him on the news, and right. Activision will recognize this list for heretofore, the rest of history. Heretofore, you heard it here first, heretofore. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. This uh, is great. This is a good list, and I'm glad we made it. Exactly. Thanks exactly. for joining me, Blake. Thank you for having me. You got anything to plug, buddy? I'll tell you what I'll plug. Uh, follow me at Twitter, Metallic is rad, all that. Uh, Three years ago, I and <clears throat> Leo and me were talking that maybe this gave me a bit of an unfair advantage. Uh, I wrote an oral history of Tony Hawk's Underground for usgamer.net. I'm still very proud of it. It was awesome to talk to, I think, like 15, maybe you'll give or take a few. Um, never soft developers like Joel Jewett, Mick West, Jim Jagger. It's an amazing piece. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's on usgamer.net. Or if you just type in Tony Hawk's Underground Oral History into Google, it's the old first option that pops up. So I want to plug that um, just because I was here talking about that game so much. Yeah. yeah. New context to appreciate that article from. Exactly. Wow. Now knowing it's God's given best game. <laughs> the chosen one <laughs> at number one. Uh, Min Max, like I said at the start, we've got a bunch more Tony Hawk stuff coming up this week. So this Tuesday, the 25th on twitch.tv slash Min Max show, we're going to be streaming the great goatee hunt. That'll be either skating or dying as our patrons will vote for on uh, Monday today. And then uh, Wednesday, more streaming on twitch.tv slash Min Max show of gameplay. Again, those streams go up the day after on YouTube. I know the timing might be confusing for people, but if you want to watch it live, it's Wednesday on twitch.tv slash Min Max show and then you watch it the next day on YouTube, archived. And again, talking about the documentary on the Min-Max show and Min Tracks, our dueling album review show that you should definitely check out, talking about the best music in the series. Blake, I love you. I love you.
Thank you for having me on. I am uh, very excited that MinMax is dedicating an entire week to Tony Hawk. And very honored that I get to be on this and Mintrax later this week. If there was ever a time to have you, man. Exactly. Never have me again, because anything (laughs) else is going to be lesser by comparison to this week. Exactly. Uh, Thanks, everybody in the chat for joining us. Uh, We'll see you next time. Do you want to get your name or Twitch or YouTube channel in the description of everything we release? Record a podcast with us, put a picture of your choice on MinMax's TV, or a whole lot more? You can check out the benefits for supporting us on Patreon. If you support MinMax at any tier on Patreon, you can submit questions or comments for us to read on the air, and you'll also get access to the wonderful MinMax Discord. We need your help to keep this whole indie trainer rolling, so we'd appreciate it if you checked us out.